Joyce, I think we have to talk about the stakes. You have the FBI shooting an armed man this week who made threats against President Biden, against Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. How concerned are you about Trump's attacks against DA Willis, the fact that there is a television ad airing in the Atlanta market? So the problem here is that we are so used to this behavior from Trump that in many ways it almost goes unnoticed. But it's deeply serious. At this point, a responsible person, which the former president is not, would be aware that their words carry the threat and the risk of violence. The fact that Trump continues this and that he aims his venom at public servants, at prosecutors, at law enforcement officers and others is abundant reason for people to take this seriously. That's why Fonnie Willis issued uh, a, the request that the Fulton County Courthouse be shut down for a period of time to permit her to move forward without posing a threat to innocent bystanders. The fact that nothing has happened with this first series of indictments, although, as you point out, there have been some near misses, the fact that there's been no major outbreak, I fear has put people uh, into a little bit of a mode where they are not as alert as they should be. Going forward, though, law enforcement will have to be on full alert for these sorts of court appearances and other events. Joyce, as I so often ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to walk us through a timeline this time for the indictment in Fulton County. If you have the grand jury hearing testimony Tuesday, when then could we expect charges? So we should expect charges in the next two weeks. There's a little bit of a wrinkle in the procedure in Fulton County involving how long the prosecutor has to take a case to trial. They have two grand jury sessions from when they indict, including the one that they indict in. We're in the last couple of weeks of the current session. There's another one that happens end of the year. It's unlikely Willis would want to wait that long. So we should expect to see an indictment during this term, probably early this week. It will then be announced, and we'll see, as we have in other cases, an arraignment, and then the early proceedings in cases often a protective order or the commencement of discovery. Luke, as you talk to Republicans on the Hill, do you get any sense that they are bracing for the next two weeks, that they know what is coming, that they feel it impacts their politics in any way? Well, they're all on vacation right now, so they're not running around the hill. They're worried. not answering your phone calls, Luke Broadwater? <laughs> no, but I mean, look, there's been no break from Donald Trump. In fact, there's a rallying around him. A bunch of uh, the Florida Republicans from the hill right now are uh, with Donald Trump or flew with him to Iowa to support him. So they, they almost all expect him to be indicted if he talked to his his um, allies, they will. They expect to be charged with a fourth case, and they they believe. And I don't know if this is just bluster or not. That they think every time he gets charged, it's good for him in the Republican primary. That he raises more money. That he um, goes up in the polls. That he has an adversary to fight against. That they can portray as as uh, you know biased the Biden administration or the Justice Department or or um, a Democratic prosecutor. Um, the, 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 the larger concern for the Republicans, of course, is that once they get to the general election, uh, all the you know all the antics and criminality and and charges against uh, swirling around Donald Trump is is going to be off putting to a ton of moderate and, and independent voters. But they seem to have um, you know made up their minds that they're going to go with him no matter what.